Roll for Crit presents how to play Thunderstone Quest in five minutes or less or more. Thunderstone Quest is the deck building game in which you will quest to fight monsters, gain experience, and thunder stones. Designed by Mike Elliott and published by AEG. To win a game of Thunderstone Quest, you'll need to have more points than your opponents from a combination of experience point tokens and points given to you from cards in your deck. Since this is a deck building game, each player will begin with their own personal deck of 12 starter cards, plus a guild card and a side quest card which will provide you with some early goals and bonuses. On your turn, you'll draw six fresh new cards to your hand from your deck, assuming your HP is full. Then you'll make a choice. Either take your turn in the village or the dungeon. Each section of the board allows you to do very different things and you can only pick one. Once you've made your choice, you'll lay all of your cards out in front of you and play them according to their instructional text. There are two major types of currency to keep track of on your turn, gold and attack power. How much you've managed to generate from the cards that you've played, based on the numbers in the upper left corners, will tell you what you can accomplish that round. After playing your hand, you'll discard all of your cards, draw a new hand, and let the next player go. But let's get more in depth into what you can actually do on your turn, starting with the village. If you decide to go to the village, you'll then need to decide where to place your character. Depending on which of these designated spaces you choose, you'll be able to take a different action on your turn. At the bazaar, you can spend your gold for gear tokens, which you'll place on your player board and can be traded in later on for perks. Iron rations will give you an extra gold or allow your hero characters to hold more weapons. Lanterns can provide light, which will help you progress through the dungeon, and potions heal you for 1 HP apiece. At the guild's quarter, you'll be able to upgrade two of your hero cards. This is something you can do normally at the end of a village turn, but only once. This space allows you to do it twice. We'll cover that more in a bit. The temple allows you to heal an extra wound from your character, in exchange for placing a card from your hand on top of your deck and not leveling up any heroes that turn. And the Shop of Arcane Wonders is where you can spend gold to buy a treasure card, a powerful type of card that can provide you with an immediate bonus or beef up your existing deck. At the same time that you carry out one of these location actions, you should also check your played cards for any actions that are indicated as village actions. You can carry these out in any order. Then, once both your village card and board actions are complete, you can purchase one card from the marketplace for the price indicated in the lower right corner. There are three types of cards you'll find here. Weapons, which are held by heroes and used for attacks. Spells, standalone cards with various special effects. And items, with even more special effects. Each card pile in the marketplace contains multiple copies of the same card. You can only buy one per turn, but there's no limit to how many you can have in your deck. When you purchase a card, it goes into your discard pile to be drawn on a future turn. Whenever your main deck runs out of cards, shuffle your discard pile to be used as your new deck. After buying a card, you can heal up to one wound from your character board. Finally, in the village, you can level up one hero. You'll start with basic heroes with no class, but they can grow into better things. Each hero has a shield with a number indicating their level. In order to level one up, you must spend an amount of experience point tokens equal to the number of that level plus two. Your basic heroes have a level of zero, so it only costs two tokens to upgrade one. At first, when leveling up, you can choose a level 1 hero from any of the available piles. That card goes into your discard pile, and your old hero card gets destroyed, meaning it's removed from the game. Once you've chosen a path, you have to stick to it, however. Your level 1 wizard can only progress later on into a level 2 wizard from the same pile, with the same card name. You can make each of your adventurer classes unique, or you can have multiple of the same class or card type in your deck, depending on your strategy. These cards can also be bought with gold rather than experience during the market phase. So that's what happens in the village, but let's say you decided to go to the dungeon. In the dungeon, you reveal your hand like normal and use any dungeon abilities on your cards. Unlike the village, however, there are no locations to choose from. Instead, you'll always start in the wilderness. Then, if you'd like to, you can move throughout the six dungeon tiles as freely as you're able to. In the upper right corner of a dungeon tile, you'll find a number indicating how much light you must have generated to enter into it. Light is generated by certain cards found in their bottom left corner. Light can also come from lantern tokens bought in the bazaar if you trade them in. If you don't have enough light, you can't enter that tile. Dungeon tiles or monster cards may also have special rules and conditions that apply when entering into them, so pay attention. You can't move diagonally through tiles, and you don't have to stop and fight a monster there if you don't want to. In each dungeon tile, as well as in the wilderness, you'll find a monster to fight. While dungeon tile monsters go away after being killed, the giant rat in the wilderness remains out for the whole game and can be fought and killed by multiple players each round. However, you can only fight one monster per turn, and here's how it works. First, check if there are any before battle effects on the monster card, dungeon tile, or your own cards. After resolving those, you can assign weapon cards to hero cards. In order for a weapon to be effective, it must be wielded by a hero, otherwise it's useless. 
Each hero and weapon has a skill value. A hero can hold multiple weapons, but their combined skill value cannot exceed the hero's skill value. They can only carry so much. Add up all of your attack power from your hero cards, weapons, and any additional items or spells that may cause damage. If that total number is equal to or greater than the monster you're fighting, you win! Destroy the monster and receive your rewards. Rewards, or spoils, are indicated at the bottom of the card, usually in the form of experience points, gear tokens, or treasure cards. There may be additional rewards listed on the dungeon tile. You might also receive one or more wounds after fighting. Wound tokens are placed on your character board from left to right. The leftmost visible number is how many cards you'll draw into your hand at the end of your turn. So if you take too many wounds, you're not going to have too many cards to play with. Some monsters may also inflict festering wounds, which are cards that go into your deck. Be careful. Some monsters may also have magical or physical resistance, indicated by a small number next to their health. So if you were attacking this monster with magical resistance, using magical attacks, the first portion of your attack would have to go to that smaller number before it goes to the big one. Think of it like a shield. If you just use the other form of attack that the monster isn't resistant to, you don't have to worry about that shield at all. You'll remain in the dungeon tile you were on at the end of the turn until your next turn. So if you decide to stay in the dungeon in the next round, you won't have to start back from the wilderness again until you eventually move back to the village. When a monster is defeated in a dungeon tile, it's replaced with a monster of equivalent value from the appropriate deck. Hidden within each of these decks are key cards. When a key card is revealed, it gets put to the side and another monster is drawn. When a certain number of these key cards are revealed, the game is about to end. Now is when you flip over the giant rat to reveal your final boss card. Now each player gets to draw their normal hand, plus an additional six cards. Then they must choose four cards from their total hand to discard. Then they get one final turn, during which they may choose to attack this final card. Finally, everyone can count up their tokens and any points from cards or special abilities to see who won. In conclusion, village, dungeon, buy, attack, gain experience, level up, quest. That's Thunderstone Quest in a nutshell. Did you get all that? Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave your comments below. Oh yeah!